as the clock ticks closer to midnight, marking the end of one year and the beginning of another. Most people are filled with joy and anticipation. But for some, the New Year's Eve is not just a celebration. It's a night where eerie and unexplainable events unfold. In this video, we delve into three creepy, true New Year's Eve horror stories. These are not your typical festive tales. Instead, they are true accounts of horror that happened during the supposed time of cheer and hope. From unsettling encounters to mysterious happenings, join us as we uncover the darker side of the New Year's Eve celebrations. Viewer discretion is advised, as these true stories might just change the way you view the countdown to midnight. I'm a 22-year-old male and was recently invited to a New Year's Eve party along with a couple who are friends of mine. Since they lived 20 minutes from me and the guy knew the way, I offered them a ride. It was an enjoyable party with 15 friends and we decided to leave in the early morning, around 5.30 a.m. I had only a bit of champagne so I could drive and my friends had almost nothing to drink as they had plans the next day and wanted to avoid a hangover. As we left the party, a man began making inappropriate comments towards my friend's girlfriend. We tried to ignore him and quickly got into the car, locking the doors and driving away fast. However, we were unfamiliar with the town and had to stop to set up the GPS. That's when we noticed the same man in a car next to us at a red light. He seemed to be following us. As we continued driving onto the highway, he did the same, matching our speed and even mimicking our movements. After about 40 minutes, feeling increasingly threatened, we decided to exit the highway. I stopped two streets away from my friend's house for safety. My friend's boyfriend and I confronted the man ready to defend ourselves. Fortunately, as we approached, the man sped away. We quickly said our goodbyes, and I drove back towards the highway, only to find the creepy guy's car waiting. He began following me again, continuing this unnerving chase. Still unnerved by the situation, I tried to keep my cool, pretending not to notice the man following me as I re-entered the highway. Spotting two large trucks ahead, I seized the opportunity to lose him, speeding up and weaving between them at about 90 miles per hour. As I glanced in the rearview mirror, I noticed the distance between us growing. Taking my exit, I pulled onto a side road with a clear view of the highway. I watched as the man momentarily exited the highway, but then quickly re-entered presumably realizing he had lost me. I waited, my car lights off, until I was sure I had shaken him off. The remainder of the drive was tense, but uneventful. I was shaken by the incident, constantly checking over my shoulder until I finally reached home. This past New Year's Eve, after the unsettling experience, I decided to spend a quieter night away with my two best friends and one of their moms. We were invited to Palm Springs to celebrate. The city, known for its shopping and resorts, was hosting a block party downtown, which seemed like the perfect way to enjoy the festivities without too much commotion. We planned a calm night, watching the ball drop, enjoying a few drinks, and maybe some light dancing. As we made our way to the block party, we stumbled upon a lively gay bar. Sarah and Rachel, both gay, were thrilled and suggested we return after the main event. The atmosphere was welcoming and vibrant, with a crowd mostly composed of men. After some time at the block party, we returned to the bar, where Sarah's mom kindly bought us each a drink before leaving us to enjoy the night. 
It was around 10.30, and we were having a great time, dancing and savoring our drinks. I'm usually very cautious when drinking in public, but I felt relatively safe in the bar's environment. I went to order a second drink, and that's the last clear memory I have. The subsequent events are pieces I've put together from what Sarah and Rachel told me. Shortly after getting my second drink, I began to feel unwell and asked Rachel to accompany me to the bathroom. Within minutes, I collapsed on the floor, nearly unresponsive. Rachel, now extremely worried, managed to drag me out to where Sarah was waiting. Seeing my condition, security assumed I was just overly intoxicated and asked us to leave. With great difficulty, Sarah and Rachel carried me half a mile back to the hotel, during which I was unconscious and barely making any sounds. To make matters worse, I vomited all over myself, them, and the sidewalk. They noticed a man who had left the bar at the same time as us, following closely behind, persistently hitting on Rachel and offering to help carry me, despite her clear agitation and repeated rejections. Thankfully, a middle-aged woman intervened, scolding the man and threatening to call the police, which finally made him leave. Then, by some stroke of luck, an EMT and his wife, who were out celebrating, came across us. The EMT quickly assessed my condition and, realizing I needed immediate care, helped carry me to our hotel room. My friends were immensely grateful for the assistance. As my friends were trying to settle in and take care of me, there was a sudden knock at the door. It was the EMT and his wife again, warning us that the man from the bar had followed us and was seen hopping the hotel gate, presumably heading for our room. Alarmed, my friends immediately contacted hotel security, who responded swiftly and ensured our safety throughout the rest of the night. The next day, I awoke with little memory of the night's events, piecing together what happened from Sarah and Rachel's accounts. It was a New Year's Eve that started with anticipation and fun, but turned into a terrifying experience we would never forget. Despite the hotel security's efforts, the man was never found. My friends hadn't gotten a good look at him, but I was convinced it was the same individual from the bar. The rest of the night was spent in misery as I continued to vomit and dry heave until morning. I woke up surrounded by pillows and blankets on the bathroom floor, with no recollection of the events after getting my second drink at the bar. My friends recounted the horrifying night, and I couldn't help but feel something was off. Despite only having had two drinks over a couple of hours, I had never blacked out in my life. We concluded that my first drink must have been drugged, especially since Rachel, who also had some of it, couldn't recall our walk back. The suspicion fell on the persistent man who had been bothering us at the bar and then followed us to the hotel. It's haunting to think of what might have happened if it weren't for the vigilance of my friends and the kindness of strangers. The incident remains a chilling reminder of the dangers that can lurk even in familiar celebrations. On another New Year's Eve in 2015, I attended a house show party at a close friend's place. The evening began on a high note with about 60 people I knew well, all in high spirits, celebrating and enjoying the music from several bands. I was mindful of my drinking, planning to stay until dawn and meet other friends who were working a public event. As the night progressed, the party swelled to over 100 attendees, with unfamiliar faces appearing from neighboring university area parties. By 1 a.m., I was on my third beer, enjoying the lively atmosphere and capturing moments on my camera. 
the party's mood was infectious, but amidst the revelry, I maintained a sense of moderation, aware of my limits with alcohol. Despite the crowded and chaotic environment, I remained connected and attentive, aware that such events could sometimes take an unexpected turn. Feeling unusually intoxicated by 1.30 a.m., I stepped away from the crowd to catch my breath in the quieter living room. As I was texting my friend, inviting her over as planned, a man approached from behind, pressing his body against mine and gripping my hip. His words sent a chill down my spine as he whispered a vile threat into my ear. Suddenly, the excessive drunkenness I felt was explained. I hadn't been simply overwhelmed by the party. I'd been drugged. Panic surged through me, but I knew I had to act quickly. I pushed away from the man and ran as fast as my unsteady legs would carry me. Grabbing my purse and jacket, I frantically dialed my friends, struggling to form coherent thoughts. My vision blurred and my movements sluggish, I managed to find my way out of the party, every second critical. In those terrifying moments, I was acutely aware of how close I had come to an unimaginable horror. By some miracle, my friends picked up and guided me to safety, ensuring I wasn't alone until the effects of the drug had worn off and I was out of danger. That New Year's Eve was a stark reminder of the peril that can lurk in the midst of celebration. It left an indelible mark on me, a night that was supposed to be filled with joy and new beginnings, instead became a harrowing escape from a predator's grasp. It's a story I share not to evoke fear, but to remind others always to be vigilant and protect themselves especially in environments where you might let your guard down.